movement and thought. The basic responses of I and I. Metamorphosis. Keep listening. In life I shall be the same, in death I shall be a terror. Black men around me in a white Nasty Babylon stripe your mother from St. Mary. Call it the big girl for your program. I am a disciple. I've yeah. been there since almost inception. Guide, I, guide, it's the voice that sets me free. I just see what I'm doing too, because, you know, me always even watch someone at television and stuff, and that I feel see for later. Me have to really listen to you first, you know what I mean? How Then 
Denastelin, Denastelin, greetings, greetings, Dr. Ayman Black here, this is The Metamorphosis, live from Sazafin, coming to you in living red, green and gold. Give thanks for another opportunity to share some thoughts and to express some ideas and in the process encouraging all the listeners to be more conscious and to awaken the consciousness that emanates from within. And when I am on say within, it means within. Because all powers come from within. And that source that is within is the I. The intangible, invisible, immortal I. You can see me and you can touch me. But you can't see the I and you can't touch the I. The I is infinite. Yes, I give thanks again. Greetings again to everyone in the righteous name of our trinity the ancient 
representation of the black family structure and black civilization. So I greet, greet you in the righteous name of Osar, Oset, and Heru. Plagiarized by the Greeks and named Osiris, Isis, and Oros. But whatever name we choose to use, it is symbolic of the family. And the family from the African tradition is the mother, the father, and the holy child, the Trinity. So healing the listeners who are on the land, in the immediate environment, Port Antonio, and in the wider area of the parish of Portland, healing all those who are in this northeastern confederation from St. Thomas through Portland, through St. Mary into St. Anne's, and special greetings, of course, to those who are outside the confed, St. Catherine, Clarendon, Manchester, down the line, right around the island, St. James, St. Elizabeth, Trelawney, and various places that have been demarked as parishes. And then we hear those are in the larger plantation of North America, in Canada and the US of A. And special hail to those who are in the UK, and those who are down under, and a mighty, mighty greetings to the people of the continent of Africa. Yes, post, I'm Iman Black, and I must say a few things before getting into the essence of the program. Because the program is under, under some form of assault. The program is being harassed. And this harassment is coming from forces that are beyond our shores. So this program has been running at Styles FM from 2009. And part of the program is the music. The music has been organized to synchronize with the text that it provides a sort of, sort of uh, synergy with the reasoning. But I must tell the listeners that over the last couple of months, there has been a con concerted effort by those who are in the greater powers to restrict the music that I am been playing. And in that restriction now, because the program is streamed live around the globe, the contention now is that the music that I'm using, I have no authority to use it. And on that basis now, the programs are being blocked internationally. I find that absolutely strange because I'm in it of, the, of the view that the radio stations do pay royalty for the songs that are played in the radio station. And so it's very strange that I will get a list of songs that I must not play. And on that basis, the programs have been blocked for the last couple of weeks. I'm a radio man and I listen to the radio, internet radio, and I hear the same songs that I play playing on, on other radio stations. So it kind of perplex I'm on that 99% of the other stations can play the same songs that I play. And when I play those songs, I get a letter or a note telling me that these songs I no longer have the authority to use. So it's a complicated situation. And ultimately what is being blocked is not the music, but the content. So it just means that somebody somewhere, fee say, what I man I say, not to say. Well, what I man I say will be said still. And it just forced I and I to realize that black man struggle is intensifying and the forces of colonialism and racism and those that govern and control the wealth are still trying to cut out the tongues of black people who speak out of their own thoughts and the plantation they used to cut out the tongue of all revolutionary leaders and those who would speak from their own thoughts that apparently is a bit barbaric 
But the methodology and the ideology remains the same. Silent thing, black thinkers. So much of the program, the music will be sort of confined to a particular artist who has given me the go ahead to use his music. Because he seems to have the power to control his own copyrights. And artists that have been, songs that have been playing, suddenly, all of a sudden, now become unplayable. Local artists, overseas artists, you name it, then block it. So the metamorphosis will not surrender because the struggle of the black man is continuous. So you may hear songs repeated and ultimately those who control their own music and would like to have it aired on the metamorphosis, they have to just link me directly and through some arrangement now we can get your music to be played within the program. So I'm on kind of feeling a little way different because the forces that are out there are declaring themselves. Actually, like the deck, let me say, is a war. And the Africans, we have been fighting ever since Arabs and Europeans invaded our lands. We have been struggling to regain not just the lands, but to regain our consciousness. Because the land has wealth within it. But if the people lack consciousness, the wealth will be controlled by others. And it's obviously that has been happening for the last 200 or 300 years. So and I will continue to express I thinking. And I hope the listeners will continue to participate in the metamorphosis. And to ultimately, when the lines are open, you'll be able to make your own input and share your observations as to what's really happening in and around the world. So the program in this dispensation now, we're going to want to look at the world today. Really, because the world today is in a serious disarray. The world today is not what it was up to November last year. Because up to November last year, the world was under an order that was in place for the previous 60 years. And that order, of course, was an order that was governed by the Russians and the, United, and the Americans. And I'm not afraid to speak about race. Because it is becoming more and more obvious that the, re- the world is being governed along the lines of race. It is just the Negro Christians who are blinding themselves to race. And the Negro acad- academia, academics who are being financed by these European and American people that they are trying to put across to our population that there's no such thing as race. And the only race that exists is a human race. And I told, tell you them that it's totally bunk. Because for people who even believe in the scripture, there is no concept of a human in the Bible. It's all about man. So we have an alien ideology that is promoting this idea of human race. And it diminishes the concept of the African. So all of a sudden, African people are telling you that they are not Africans, they are humans. And we're going to see that this is a deception. It's a scam to knock us away off our foundation that we no longer have any base to rally around. So the unity that African people need have to resolve, revolve around our cultural identity. And if we make people tell us that we're no longer Africans by race, but not we are now humans, we're going to totally lose it. So I will continue to advocate the idea that the Africans, as a race of people, are no different from the concept of man and that the original man is African. We have a thing now called human. And human is not man. Human is a kind of a man. 
like mankind is a kind of a man but mankind also means man so I and I will continue to sort out the identity crisis that we have the basis of our unification it must be our own race we got the message years ago we got the message directly from our own national hero race first so once you lose the concept of your Africanness and get deceived into this humanness then we have lost it because the way the humans are running the world today it does not benefit African people we see that the world is being governed by forces that are promoting what they call white nationalism and even today in America lynching is back that begin to lynch black people again in North America and so if we begin to wake up the Ku Klux Klan is on the march and they have been legitimized by the person who sits in the White House so there's enough things happening around us and on the very same island that we live and then I will begin to explore through this metamorphosis where we are today and how do we get into this state and also realize that empires rise and empires fall the Egyptians the Greeks the Romans the British we are in the era of the American Empire we are at the tail end of the American Empire and somebody must be in the office when the Empire is falling and that person has been designated to be the Trump so people are running around scratching them head talking about the man is a madman and the man is this and the man is that this man is important and this man is relevant because evolution is real rise and fall and while Nero was in Rome fiddling Rome was burning and while the Trump is playing golf America is descending we shall explore metamorphosis
Are you seeking a place to rent? Seeking employment or have a job vacancy? Are you selling a car or having a garage sale? Then come see us. Let Styles do the advertising for you and you'll be on your way in no time. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Advertising Style. Advertise with Styles. For the best quality in sound reinforcement and backlining, Native Audio. We have professional engineers with over 20 years of experience. So call us and we'll take care of your parties, wedding receptions, barbecues, conferences and small stage shows. Crystal clear sound, Native Audio. Our prices are the best. Call us at 871-5212. That's 871-5212. Native Audio. We make your events audible. 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 Architects, draftsmen, and surveyors, get your drawings printed in high-quality professional standards. We can satisfy your printing needs. Whether it is for presentation to your clients or for submitting building and subdivision application, make it VJ Printing Services. Whether drawing by hand or with computer-aided softwares, we will plot your negatives and print the copies as you need. We do high-quality white paper printing that is water-resistant and never fades, unlike traditional blueprint. For more information, call VJ Printing at 8 Eight nine three two two six six. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, conveniently located at 15 Boundbrook Crescent, Port Antonio. For a large space of single and double rooms at reasonable rate, Wi-Fi, cable TV, breakfast to order, 24-hour security, CC cameras, parking, snack bar and lounge. Beautiful scenery of the Caribbean Sea. We're willing to assist with additional accommodation, such as fridge in your room, coffee machine and so much more. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, proud sponsor of the Metamorphosis with Dr. Iman Black live on Styles FM Mondays 9 p.m. to midnight. Call Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House at Metamorphosis is here again, Dr. Ayman Block. Oh, the sound that you're hearing is really the sound of a theme song that has been a part of the program ever since its inception. And I have personal permission from the author and owner of the song, Maragini, great world class drummer. So we're going to begin by looking into not just African history, but a sort of review quickly as to where is it I and I as a people coming from and how do we arrive at this position and how is it we fit into the world today, what's happening in the world and shall we just be consumers and spectators or can we become active and become changers and become real players in the game because a game being played. Unfortunately, the thing about a game, you know, it's all about who sets the rules. It's about the referee. And if we do have to control over the laws of the game, then those who set the laws can simply change the laws as it suits them. It happened in cricket years ago, when the West Indies had the most ferocious fast bowling team in the world and greatest batsmen. An Englishman they had to surrender to two five love straight. And their next action was to begin to change the laws of cricket began to introduce bumper law where you couldn't bowl more than one bounce in a game and they began to limit the amount of innings over per game and disturbed the rhythm of the West Indian team ultimately fast bowling was no longer a threat and with that came the effects of cutting out the West Indies players from playing in the English county leagues 
removing our training ground for professionalism and ultimately pull down the West Indies team. To the point where in the West Indies team is no longer worthy of watching at a test level. The last match against Pakistan is the most disturbing result I've ever seen. We are in with just one ball to go and you just need to play for a draw. The man just go there and swing the bat and out. Never in my life have such a thing ever taken place before. But that's what happens when you feel the wrath of those who control the laws. So we're going to look into the lawgivers and how do we respond to these lawmakers. They can change the laws as they suit them. And then they hide behind what they call a constitution. So the same people will come into your land, rob your land, create a constitution. And when you try to reclaim your land, they tell you that, no, you're a lawbreaker. So we're going to open our eyes out to what's happening around us and reflect on how the world has gotten to where it is and how do black people now fit into this global confusion. We have to reflect consistently on the plantation life and the fact that the plantation life has not necessarily changed. Neither has the plantation changed much. People have been able to be more, be more mobile within the plantation. But the laws and those who govern still remain the same. So in North America and in the Caribbean, the black people in general experience that uprooting and that raping and that sodomizing as a race of people brought into the West now as slave labor. And nothing has changed in terms of laboring and slaving. Because I and I still engage in labor for less than the the time that we put out, we get less returns. We have been coerced by the church to not desire money while realizing that it requires money to meet the very basic needs. So enough contradictions, enough conflictions. And at the same time now, we're seeing the powers of the white man rising again. So how do I and I respond to these things? How do I, how do I react? And do we just simply react or do we act? What must be the response of the black people on a whole? And how does the individual deal with issues? I've, 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 I want to begin by looking at United States and the fact that they are now considered to be the world power and because of the rise and fall of the cycle of life the American Empire began its rise in 1776 when a set of white people broke away from England sailed across the Atlantic entered the land of the natives committed the genocide and set up their constitution and became owners of North America. They restricted the native population to reservations and declared themselves free men, WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. So these are men and people who came with their racial identity and came with a religious identity. They were white, Anglo-Saxon, Protestants. And let us not ever forget the WASP and what the WASP represents in North America because the WASP is on the rise again 200 years later. So the American Empire from 1776 set up a declaration of independence, declared themselves to be free people, wrote a constitution, Within their constitution, it defined the African as three-fifths of a human being. So this is the first time now we are being defined as humans because before that we were man. Now we are being classified as humans and not 100% human either, three-fifths. So you see the position in the psychology that the white man has put us from very early that sense of inferiority within the African population and with the white man creating within himself a sense of superiority. 
And these are based upon historical realities. And many of us are unwilling to recognize the past, claiming that it happened a long time ago, so it doesn't really matter. Well, the past is the foundation upon which the present rests. And if you ignore the past, you shall surely pay the price in the present. So those white people who ran away from Europe, calling themselves citizens of America, they were really refugees in the first place. Refugees looking security on a different land. And in that refugee status, they turned themselves into citizens and turned those who were natives into servants. We shall never forget, and it's impossible for us to forget if we want to understand where we are today. So the Caucasian, because he's not a really white, you know, there's no such thing as a white man. He's Caucasian. And by saying Caucasian, we mean he lacks pigmentation. I've recognized who this character is now because in 2017, we're seeing him in his fullness with absolute political power in what is called the greatest democracy in the world. So I know as African people must look at him carefully and check him out, where him come from, what is his agenda, and where do we look to find our own strength to resist this type of behavior that we now see being manifested, particularly out of the White House in America. So the African people now would be subjected to rape and disruption and a total upheaval out of our own culture. And we were brought into this hemisphere now to become slave labor. We have to recognize the role of the church in helping to maintain the status quo. Whether it's Christianity or Islam or any der derivation, all of these things have been working against I and I as black people. So if we bring these things within the context and sight of yourself. So the American empire from 1776 has been growing and much of the labor force that put America together were black people, not as immigrants, but as slaves. So the struggle about immigration does not apply to black people because black people were never immigrants. Black people were slaves. And in that meditation, the white man has not changed. So we have to set the picture clearly that we can understand what does Trump represent in 2017? What is the meaning of the military industrial complex? What are the forces that are driving the world today? And how do I and I as a people respond consciously? Well, I also have in the studio a bridge who will help to go through the reasonings. Long time him don't come in. Long time we don't see him, but him is here. And then we can tell us some things. And yeah, just stay tuned. Metamorphosis. Seize fire. in every generation but don't you fret and let's not forget in our minds there is a solution prisoners of war that's what we are nation fighting against nation but in our minds we can find find the solution oh yes we can i and i you and you simple people and countries do Desire, peace and war we'll see I and I, you and you Simple people and countries too Desire, peace and war 
again now metamorphosis and within the studio now is a bridge you know has been here a couple of times well last year and maybe even the year before but for some reason I'm just go underground maybe to study the consumers report <laughs> I don't know but in the studio here now is my bridge this man is a farmer teacher at the high school in Port Antonio Ditchfield and a farm administrator at the College of Science and Education called Case and presently is the, uh, the Vice Chancellor at the Rastafari University of Higher Life Learning. So I want to heal Rasmakonin and welcome the eye into the metamorphosis. Yes, I, I'm on give thanks. Greetings to all my brothers and sisters out in the diaspora. It is indeed wonderful to talk with you again. So I am grateful to Dr. Iman Black to afford I this opportunity. So how the eye has been? No, I have been out into the globe. Man see the world undergoing some <coughs> changes and people becoming maybe even more nervous now than the last time that I was here. How the, how the, how the world looking now, especially under the new administration that is directing the world. Well, according to Iman knowledge, you know, I am not in a position to be surprised concerning the ascendancy of Mr. Trump to the leadership of the American empire. I knew that Mr. Trump would win the election. If you, if you look at, no, I, I, that is an error. I knew that he would win the presidency. Mm -hmm. I was reasonably sure he wouldn't win the election. So, you see, all of the antics that Mr. Trump is carrying on, I anticipated that. I knew to a large extent some of the things that he would do. So, you see, the furor that is presently emanating based on his activities mm -hmm. across the international front. This is just the beginning. That man is really about to show the nature of the white destroyer. Well, you know, as you said that now, you know, that destroyer construct has been with us for quite a while. And we're going to reflect on its manifestations in previous years because the story that goes on before is important, what they call history, his story. And as I said, in 1776, these people decided to start their nation, began to build this concept of a, an American nation. 
but it was grounded in race first. And race, as far as I'm concerned now, and how they viewed it was the white race first. And there's a certain level we're in, race first is not necessarily a negative philosophy. Because the Chinaman employs the philosophy of race first. And the Indians do it in building their economy. The Caucasian people are stepping it up now. But look as though the African people, the black people, we are the only people who are not into race first. So I think, I think we get pinned into that corner. You see, we are pinned in that corner based on the moral teachings of Christianity. Mm. Christianity requests and require that the oppressed be meek and mild and at all times must effect an attitude of forgivingness towards the oppressor. Mm -hmm. This is a requirement of Christianity. Remember now, you know, the majority of the Africans who came here into slavery are now devout Christians. And Muslims. <laughs> and Muslims. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, both of these religions have the same yeah. basic requirement. True, true. You know, so, so as long as that is the situation, you're going to find that the, the status quo yeah. as it exists will continue. All right, so we can look at how, how is it that the white man decided to promote and articulate and to insist that race first be his way of setting up himself. Because when the man him first landed on you know, them call themselves some, some pilgrim, uh, the pilgrim fathers, yeah. and they land at pilgrim Plymouth Rock, and their whole history begins there, and then begin to write how them bring in their civilization and their Christendom to North America. And as I say, they, in their enslavement of the African race, the entire race was put under this, under this banner of Christendom. Now, they in their own development now would continue to exploit the land of North America. They would go what they call West and you know, expand, train lines and Kill Indians. Killing off the Indians and the natives as they go through. Yes. All in the name of progress. And in the name of Jesus. And in the name also. of the Jesus. Yes. Also. So we have to re keep reminding ourselves you know, how the thing really generates, you know, because a lot of people are suffering from amnesia today. We don't understand the, how is it we can go beyond emancipation. Like, 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 like we get stuck at emancipation. So the Caucasian now progressing technologically, advancing with science, the things that I and I put on the earth, him using these things and developing himself. But within his own history now, he got a critical juncture. And we call this juncture now a civil war. So war between the same white man them in America. They are having a perspective of this war. This war was in the 1800s now. Well, and what is it they were really fighting over? Watch I Rasta. <laughs> I just want to make it clear that yeah. you see the white people them, them is always fighting civil war, man. It's normal thing it's that It's a normal them. thing. Normal that. thing. We can trace it, it how far how far how far we can go with it. Alright. In going back, I could have got to the hundred year war between two houses in England. Mm-hmm. You know, these guys fought a war. It's a civil war, you know, <laughs> that lasted a hundred years. I wonder if, I wonder if I one can really understand what it means. <laughs> to be fighting for a hundred years. Yeah, man, them kill one another heartily. Yes, yes. So, you see, they transport that culture across the ocean mm -hmm. and bring it to Plymouth Rock. Yes, I. So, it stayed there and it seed and it grow. It continued growing until the population, the demographics mm. of the population started to change. There was a fear beginning to develop. Remember now, you know, 
they have institutionalized the people that they came here and kill out. Those that survived, they put them on the reservation. Mm -hmm. That is the institution I talk about. Yes. So it's two free men upon the earth at the time. The black man was in slavery in a strange land and the white man was in ascendancy in the said same strange, strange land. land. Yeah. Now, you see, the white man began from around that time to look at the danger of an African population multiplying. Right, this upon theme. Well, theme, new from theme territory, territory yes, now, yes. because that is theme territory. Yes, yeah. And you see this this resurgence of the European mentality in the image of Trump. Mm -hmm. It is a backlash on the occupation of the White House by Mrs. Obama and Mr. Obama. Serious thing. It, it, it became an affront to the and the dignity of these white people. They said was people yeah, that yeah. they are talking it, it, about. It, it burned them to the soul. It, it burned them yeah, like yeah. when was sting, sting you. you. Yes, I. So it's like right now, you see, if them could erase every memory of every word, any utterance that Obama made, yeah. any law that him signature. Well, you know, say the most famous of the laws that had his name was a thing called Obamacare. Yes. And you see what the man them do with it. Well, are you saying them finished with it already? Almost. Well, then it being dismantled point by point. Piece of piece. Of yeah, man. Right down right to the nitty-gritty. Right down nitty to the nitty-gritty. Yeah, man. That 10 years from now, you never hear nothing named that, Obama. That Obama did. That is remain part of the positive history. Look here. Obama hurt them. And him hurt them bad, yeah. bad, 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 until what they saw in Obama, if they could have killed him, and it's not that them never try, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't really hear about it, but if them could have killed him, they would have did kill him. Yeah, yeah. So now them working on obliterating his effect. What them call legacy. Yes. Yeah. But before we even reach the point which brought them in the backlash now. We will fast forward or fast back into the Civil War. Oh yes, yes my brother. The Civil War was a point in the white man history where the North went to war against the South. Yes. The, 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 the North, the North was at that time more industrialized than the South. True, technologically. The, technologically, yeah. the South supplied the raw materials. And it was the North that turned the raw material into industry. But when you say raw material now, the business of the raw material now would arrest in a, like what we call agriculture. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Is the, the South supply yeah. the raw material? The South, however, was engaged on a mass scale in the business of slavery. The North, yeah. where they had slavery, it was not about plantation true, true. slavery. More factory slavery. F factory, but yeah. it never suit them to have slave in a factory. True. So it's really whole slave. Especially chained up and all them things. No, it wouldn't work yeah, so work. well. Especially in our cities. So the North set about on, on different levels, mm -hmm. because it wasn't only about the issue of slavery. They had massive differences in terms of how the country should, should be, be run. organized, right? Yes, right, right. and what should be prioritized as far as the South was concerned, and as far as the North was concerned. So that along with the fact that history said they're going to fight anyway. It's in them. They're going to kill them one another. It's in them blood. They believe in bloodletting. Yes, sir. Yeah. That is a foundation element. I'm going to digress a little bit. All right. 
are there those listening to Iman Vice that don't believe them believe in bloodletting? Just take a look at how them kill them God and how them shedding blood and how the whole thing is really very, very bloody. Mm -hmm. So that even today, we, our people are calling about calling upon the blood of Jesus. Calling on the blood of Jesus. The thing, it only going to get worse, mm. you know. You, you see, even this business here of civil strife, you know, I, I, I talking about the present bloody state of affairs in the country where the people just killing them one another. So, yeah. It's because of the, all of the same thing where they accept that blood is normal. Normal to, to flow. It must yeah, flow. Yeah, yeah. For, the, for the redemption. Um, for the redemption <laughs> from their sins. From their sins. Well. A drama, eh? Yes. Well, the Civil War now, it put black people in a situation where in the South was claiming that free, free black people can't help them. Because we mash up them economy. Yes. And the North was put pont pontificating and giving people the impression that they were more moralistic. And therefore using even like scripture talk to, yeah. to, to justify why the enslavement of the blacks and the southern plantation should cease. But while they were pontificating, they themselves were slave owners. owners. In a them house. Of course. And some of them had plantations in the south. So the same way. So is the hypocritical white man we are speaking about? Who has perfected the heart of heart of hypocrisy? Remember, you know, at them same one did write them constitution that declare that I and I is yeah, three, three fifths, fifths of them. Of human beings. Yeah. yeah. You know? So that thing is so, so it's not like say the south conspire and wrote that. Is the it's north and the, the south, south. Yeah. conspire together true, and true. write it? All right, so metamorphosis, hold tight. Nobody don't move, you know. Can we just get in started? Planning a party, club night out, stage show, a gospel concert, or even a business sales event? Let Styles FM be a part of your promoting tool. Take advantage of our low priced promotion packages with commercials, interviews, giveaways, reviews, and much more. We have special offers when you mix and match and bundle your options. Contact us at 876 286 9216 or 439 5160. Styles FM for the most effective way to exploit your marketing dollar. Hey, Styles FM peeps, do you want to blend in with the Styles FM family? Do you got styles all day, every day? If your answer is yes, then purchase your Styles FM t-shirts today. We have sizes ranging from small to extra large, only for you, our noble listeners. Be a part of the Styles FM family by making your order for our comfortable and high quality t-shirts now for only $2,000. Stocks are limited, so get your Styles FM t-shirts today. Call 286-9216 to Place your order. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, conveniently located at 15 Boundbrook Crescent, Port Antonio. For a large space of single and double rooms at reasonable rate, Wi Fi, cable TV, breakfast to order, 24 hour security, CC cameras, parking, snack bar, and lounge. Beautiful scenery of the Caribbean Sea. We're willing to assist with additional accommodation, such as fridge in your room, coffee machine, and so much more. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, proud sponsor of the Metamorph offices with Dr. Iman Black live on Styles FM Mondays 9 p.m. to midnight. Call Barnbrook Hilltop Guest House at 715-1644. No, not no, no, well, you see it though. Yes. From the ground. Up the nice. I'm going to tell you, said nice. See. All right, all right. It's nice. Brown book in town. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice, it's nice. All right. Let us fix it before we all start to cry. It's no more fun to go in the zone. Without our own. It's no more fun to go in the zone. Without our own. I can't understand why we turn in the world in the no man's land. Without ozone, what are we but a danger zone? There 
there is a solution to this environmental destruction. See, then we will find. Let us get together in a safe land. Find the flowers and the trees and the birds and the bees. Let's stop this pollution. Oh, please, stop this pollution. Oh, please. What a situation. Anywhere you go, so much pollution. Let's not sit and wait before it's too late. Yeah, so continue in the discourse. Somebody asked me what are we talking about tonight? <laughs> Is you know, you, you gotta pay attention now, you know, because we're trying to encapsulate our struggles from the time we were captured and try to connect that to what is going on in the globe today that we can have a perspective because culture is a critical area identity is vital and for our people who are disconnected we need to find the foundations that we can connect with and we have to deal with our culture we have to deal with our identity and we have to have the knowledge to give us a perspective that is critical in this time so we're just saying now we're looking fast going through it quickly from 1776 when the land of north america was captured by white forces caucasian people running out of europe up to the point of their civil war and how is it african people in today's world must adjust themselves with the knowledge of where we're coming from and how we're being treated and how is it that we should respond to these forces so there was a great civil war in america and the civil war sort of centered around the use of black labor ultimately the moralists and the technologists came together and bring a thing called emancipation. So, well, look here. Yeah. I, I would like to make it clear that the Europeans used the Africans in that particular war, that civil war. Mm -hmm. the, the, the North, in particular, a major part of their army. For black people was black people yes sir because the black people saw themselves when they were recruited because remember slavery was still going on you mm -hmm. know and the africans are now being recruited coming out of slavery to join this the army, northern yes. army yes. as free man yeah they were now able to carry weapons and shoot white people in the name of the north mm -hmm. of america mm -hmm. and they did it and they did it so Quite well, well yeah. that the north won the war because you see when the africans went out to kill the whites you know the memory of all that was done to them yeah man brutal brutal man yeah. so they were very brutal in the business of killing in less than no time the south capitulated mm -hmm. the not overcome their adversary and america was now one country you say one union one union man coming yeah. from these 13 states exactly that were basically self-reliant or independent independent states because right. it, it, it never really have too much to do with a federation seen seen, no. seen. but what, what we find now is that African people now, after being abused and used in the civil war, and the white man come to their resolution, you know, meet General Lee versus one next general from up so on, all kind of battles the white man them fighting. Yes. At the end of it, a process was announced called emancipation. It happened in the Caribbean, it happened in the, generally in the Western world. This process now, has trapped a lot of black people into the illusion of being free. Because in this emancipation now, we were told that we were free. It happened even on the Caribbean islands, places like Jamaica. Everywhere but in the land of slavery, my brother. What is this emancipation process? I man think it was really, from the Caribbean perspective, it was really the British freeing themselves from being responsible for I and I, and gave themselves a moral excuse to be no longer be accountable for the atrocities that they committed. In North America, though, 
the political process led to black people being seen as freedmen. And they set up all bureaus called the Freedman's Bureau. Yes. And all sort of agencies were now constructed to deal with the black people's affairs. Well, one has to see quite clearly mm -hmm. that if such a bureaucracy is necessary in a state of freedom, mm -hmm. then there is no state of freedom because did they have free white people bureau of affairs no no, no it don't not exist at all, not at all. so you see if the black man was truly free based on the declaration of freedom and the said emancipation you're talking about then there would not have been any need for these for defenses these, yes, yes. to have been put up but these said fences was necessary because even though the law now said one thing there were other factors mm -hmm. involved that even now today is still going on. Well, one of those factors, you know, is the what I call the formation of the first organized terrorist group. Mm -hmm. Call themselves Klansmen. The Klansmen, yes. No, this is one of the world's first organized set of terrorists, you know. I want one and one to realize this now, you know. That because when I speak about the thing called terrorism that they are brought up on us now as a political ideology now, you know. And who is it that is spreading terrorism? The Ku Klux Klan have not died. And 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 we must also we must also realize that the Ku Klux Klan, even though it did not represent the sentiment in my opinion, of the vast majority of the white people. What it did was it represented how they felt actually towards the black people. So even if them heart wasn't to kill black people, mm -hmm. them didn't have a problem with the Ku Klux Klan yeah. doing that particular part of the work. They were not going to go out there and protest and, and protest against the clan no 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 not at all not at all in fact back at home <laughs> it was okay yeah man quiet celebration right yes. now there's quiet celebration going on no not quiet anymore no it has become very public this is part of the problem in, in 2017 yes the celebrations are no longer quiet you know they are now actually coming to the streets and calling themselves the alternative right the alternative yeah, right. Yeah. So they, they are here now and they, have, they are getting stronger to show themselves. Mm -hmm. So the alternative <laughs> right. <laughs> As Trump would say, ain't nothing wrong with being racist. Remember yeah. now, you know, the whole idea from that time was that racism was not something to be proud about. No, that is for us. We are the ones who, is, who are not supposed yeah. to be proud about our race at all our, our racism okay the european has always been proud of racism he has never denied mm -hmm. that i am a rapist uh, uh, i apologize <laughs> but he's a rapist you know yeah. yeah he has never at any point denied that he's a racist no but you see the ideology of the christianity now conflict with that position Oh well, well, you see, no. well, no, no. That is that is taken <laughs> care of by by what I would refer to as the Christian rhetoric. Mm -hmm. The Christian rhetoric is on two levels. One is what the let us say the clergy would be saying concerning what is Christianity. Mm -hmm. But you see, just like how you used the term there a couple of minutes ago. The, the alternative mm -hmm. to the right, mm -hmm. the right alternative. Yeah. Well, it's the same situation with the Christian rhetoric. The clergy is saying one thing, but there are soldiers who are also Christian. Yes, I. And they are making a mockery of what the clergy is saying. I remember now the clergy is pray, praying to the God of the white man and asking him to bless them mm -hmm. as they go out into war against 
the other people and they expect the said soldiers now because remember you know it's not god going go to the war you know mm -hmm. it's the soldiers True. now the state all of the european countries everything that is most european about them is the fact that the state don't have a problem with war or like the state will prosecute venomously mm -hmm. the people themselves uh, um the people cannot descend beyond a certain level before the state step in and say no mm -hmm. that can't work this was very evident during the time okay immediately after let us say the turn of the 19th century when america was now coming up and getting stronger and stronger as an industrial state america the machinery realized that the population of america was moving further and further away from the said pilgrims mm -hmm. that had come here mm -hmm. And they say we need to bring in new European blood. So they open up the country to an invasion of immigration. Like they call European immigrants, primarily. From the Europeans. Yeah. In yeah. order to outnumber and to continue to push the Africans numerically back mm. into a position that was more suitable, suitable. and more comfortable for the Europeans to live in America with. You see, unfortunately, you know, the situation in America where the African is concerned has never been equal as far as we in the Caribbean. We have held numerical superiority mm -hmm. in every island. Yes, in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, yeah. except perhaps some of those Spanish places where the population is very, very mixed breed. I'm talking about Puerto Rico. I'm talking about Cuba. I'm talking about the Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic is a place that was brought into existence mm -hmm. by, by the, 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 the French Revolution. Yes. Not, not the French. The, 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 the Haitian mm -hmm. Revolution. Mm -hmm. Because for a long time, the whole island, island was, was one. One island, yeah, man. It is the war now between the mulattoes and the Africans. And then the mulattoes and the African leadership sit down and say, hey, no, no, a fight will fight. Forget this. Mm -hmm. Let us not fight no more. You take this part and we take that part. And them live in peace ever since. I mean, relative peace. Relative, because it has been stirred up recently. Yes. Yeah. yes. But... To, to support the notion of bringing in these massive Im immigration policies that allow more white people to come into America, they also introduced things like Jim Crow law. Yes. But, uh, be, go ahead. Go yeah. ahead my and yeah. these laws now would consolidate their position. Yes. And make black people have to retreat. And so as much as the emancipation would, would release black people from the physical chattel, the laws would keep you enslaved. And, 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 and there was never any intention on the part of a lot of white people, neither in the north nor in the south, to allow the black man to be able to move about freely. Mm -hmm. To a large extent in the Caribbean, that never really happened. The African could move about to the extent that his ability to find scarce resources could allow him to move. And even within that movement, it allowed Africans in the Caribbean to sort of maintain a sense of identity. Because man set up free villages in the mountains and we were able to actually step away from the, the plantation. Yes. And maintain certain African retentions and certain consciousness. For a long time. For a very long time. Yes. Our brothers in North America now never had that, that, that privilege. No, no. Because there was nowhere to escape. 
you see, you see the, the, the American, the American blacks, their, their experience of slavery and it, it, it was different from Brutal, us. man. It was really bad. Brutal. Because look at the concept of lynching now. Look at lynching. That became a, a spectacle for white people. Yes. Like a party. They, they were, carried the children there. They were in physical ascendancy. Their numbers was vast in comparison to the African numbers. True. And generally, whenever there was confrontation between both groups, the Africans would lose. Automatically. Because the white people hmm. believe in killing. And, and there was not much place to escape. No. Because you're going to go from one state to another state, which is still controlled by the white people. And, and, and it didn't matter if you was in the... Well, if you, if you, if you were in the not in specific places, mm -hmm. that is, the closer you got to the seat of government, it would be the safer the African was in, 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 in America then. Then, yes. Yes. The, the further you came away the from the, the sea. The more you go into the country. Exactly. Into the southern states and those places. You face a yeah. different set of laws that didn't allow you to be 100% human. Remember, you know, these people believe yeah. in them constitution. It's totally, totally. Once them write it, yeah. as you said, it is the same constitution that allow them to claim that they own your land. Mm -hmm. And right now, after they have, all right, you see this government here, the Labour Party government, or the other party government, the PNP party mm -hmm. government, the both of them share in, in the legacy of the stolen lands because they now become the owners mm -hmm. of the capture land. They call it Crown Land. Well, <laughs> I'm on Rasta. We know says Capture Land. Declare it to be Capture Land. Yes, yes. They captured it when they came here with them guns and them Bible, Bible. and, and them, them ship and, and them, them rum yeah. and them priests yeah. and them Jesus. Yeah. That is the point at which they captured the land. After them captured the land, them have a sitting of them parliament where all the capturers sat down and then the capturers passed some laws that said these lands now belong to us. Yes, and her majesty is at the head of the lands. And then put up them flag. Yes. And if one of the man them who had lived there from eternity up until the time when they were interrupted by the Europeans, if one of those men tried ever, to ever, ever dear a piece of the land yes. that them father father, father, grandfather had hunted from the beginning of time. If them try to occupy a piece of that land, the white man throw him off the land and show him the law that he wrote. where it was written. And call him squatter. He is a squatter. What, you, what a drama, eh? A man, you know what I man always wonder about? I man black. I man wonder how could a man who slave for almost 400 years, how him could be called a squatter in the land where him slave. That is not possible. If you slave in a piece of ground for all those years, there must centuries. be something. Centuries. Centuries. There must be something that you can show to say. You are connected to the land, eh? But not even that. <laughs> and then them turn around and keep on calling the people them squatters. And you see, whether it's Labour Party government mm -hmm. or it's PNP Party government, them still making the mistake of calling the people squatters. You remember this brother here named Michael Manley? Some of the people them did really love Michael Manley. You know one of the things that him do that is of great significance. You see, while I was coming up in a this society as a youth, I used to hear the word bastard. It was a common word. Mm -hmm. 
you know. Yeah. And, and meaning, meaning, says, they might describe how you're born. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, this brother here, Michael Manley, did really kind of remove that out of the books. Remove it out of the books. Yes. Yeah. And that is significant. Yeah. Now, I don't know if him do anything even bigger than that still. You know, but that was significant yeah. because, you see, there are some cornerstones in this thing that need to be abolished and removed from the books. Yeah. And one of them is this business of squatting. Yes. Uh, is lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cannot be a squatter in a land where you serve the Queen of England for over 300 years. Somebody owe you something mm -hmm. and it's not petty cash. True. Yes. True. Well, as we can continue now, you know, and you talk about the lands, even in today's world, we see where the lands now are being given away to the Chinese. And that is... And, an and, 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 and that's a whole different kettle of worm now we have to look at. You're my brother, that is an abomination. Totally. Yes. So I and I squatter here, but the lands can be given to the Chinese. Is that possible? It's happening because it's them writing the laws. So we, we squatter <laughs> here. Yeah. And you're giving the land yeah. to the Chinese who, people. Who will become residents, not squatters. Yes. All right. Well, you see, in North America now, the black man will promise that he will get 40 acres and a mule for his compensation mm -hmm. for the enslavement. Well, man, them don't even get one acre and not even a, a, a foot of the mule them get. Yes. So... The, 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 the powerlessness of the black people becomes very obvious. And we said a dimension now being created where it's not a matter of righteous being unrighteous, but it's about the powerful versus the powerless. And I and I as a people now have to begin to reconstruct ourselves along the lines of Gavi and recognize the importance of power. And also the concept of race. First. First. Yes. Vital, you know. Yes, you see, a lot of people don't visit the philosophy of Marcus Garvey uh, in earnest. And one of the things that Garvey said from the very beginning is that if this people was going to make it up out of slavery, if we were going to make it out physically and mentally we would have to do it ourselves mm -hmm. we couldn't depend on another race to do it we couldn't depend on the generosity mm -hmm. of another people to, to finance yes. our solutions if we didn't do it ourselves then it will never be done that is something that Marcus Garvey was very, very firm. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't shake him. No European could offer him a donation. He didn't want that. Mm -hmm. That is why he set up this elaborate system of movement of money. And from commerce, Ireland yes, yes. To I, Ireland. I, 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 that I, I, is why he set up this elaborate yeah. system of Black Star Line going all the way back to Liberia. And the media just turn it into a, into a ridicule. You know, and make I and I feel as though the man was out of his mind. But, but perhaps he was but, out of the European mind look, and look, into his own black mind. Look here, I'll know, you know, mm -hmm. I'll know I man hear them having arguments concerning exonerating Marcus Garvey, among others. Mm -hmm of the charges that were laid against them, that is granting them pardon and all kind of things like that. And I'm on saying that if you grant a man pardon... You're acknowledging him to do something wrong. Yeah, him to do something yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and if, 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 you're going to, if you're going to change the records, you're still saying that the man did something mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. The whole truth is that what happened to Marcus Garvey, what happened to Sam Sharp, what happened to the, all of the people mm -hmm. them, who they're talking about, it happened. Mm -hmm. And in the words of Sizzler, the damage already, already done. done. 
You can't change it because you change the law. It's like, all right, you see them whole leap of people who suffer and go through hell because of the ganja laws mm-hmm. of nine months and 18 mm-hmm. months. Mm-hmm. All right, who going responsible for all of them picnic that who never go to school? All right. Who never eat no food that Because night. of the law. Because of the said yeah. same ganja yeah. law. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then the man them just turn wrong and change it. So you see now, the powers of lawgivers, it's vitally you now. Because apparently those who write the laws are the ones who control the game. Remember I tell you from the beginning of the program, you know. Yes. It's the man who write the law, run the game, you know. And if the game don't suit him, he just change the law. Well, we have seen evidence <laughs> of that in the reversal of ganja yes. law. Yes. Because, look, if the thing did wrong from day one... Yeah, or it right it, now. Yeah, or it changed so suddenly. Change, so. And the said man them who did a persecute, yeah. I and I, yeah. the said man yeah. them who go knock them gavel yeah, yeah. and say i sentence you yeah. to 18 months yeah, yeah. i sentence you to nine months yeah. and the man them never in them sentences a frenzy against the ganja smokers them never one day allow themselves to think said these are human beings and when i send that man to prison for nine months it's so much pick me man yeah, yeah and the family structure destroy yeah, that don't that don't factor in so you see we have to kind of constantly review where we're coming from you know and we need to also have a little anger i think we're too calm as a people and of our anger directed against our own selves but we need to focus on who really is the enemy that is a problem because remember, you know, the enemy kind of change. Mm-hmm. In the day still, you know, yes. as the European, yeah. that don't change. But he has now established like a middle ground where the said black people who used to work in a, the great house, they had the first choice and Christianity and education and them use it to establish themselves and them generation on the basis of education on the basis of education Mm -hmm. they establish themselves to the extent that you hardly realize that is the same man who is now holding the powers of the Queen of England. Mm. So you see, you're looking at the same people generally with the same complexion. However, them is really the enemy. All right. We're going to take a pause. Metamorphosis. Planning a party, club night out, stage show, a gospel concert, or even a business sales event? Let Styles FM be a part of your promoting tool. Take advantage of our low price promotion packages with commercials, interviews, giveaways, reviews, and much more. We have special offers when you mix and match and bundle your options. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Styles FM for the most effective way to exploit your marketing dollar. Native Audio and Equipment Rental Services now offering stage lighting and trust systems for your small and medium-sized events. Whether it's a stage show, concert, play, wedding, street party, or even club setting, you name it, we'll bring it to life. Call us at 871-5212 or 844-6531. Native Audio and Equipment Rental Services, proud sponsor of In the Know of the Law with Sergeant Delrose Green and Real Talk with Lady Cleo and Daddy Rude. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, conveniently located at 15 Boundbrook Crescent, Port Antonio. 
for a large space or single and double rooms at reasonable rate. Wi-Fi, cable TV, breakfast to order, 24-hour security, CC cameras, parking, snack bar and lounge. Beautiful scenery of the Caribbean Sea. We're willing to assist with additional accommodation such as fridge in your room, coffee machine and so much more. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, proud sponsor of the Metamorphosis with Dr. Iman Black, live on Styles FM, Mondays, 9 p.m. to midnight. Call Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House at 715-1644. Yes, the metamorphosis continuing looking through the historical pages of black people and their struggle and the force that white people have imposed upon I and I as a as a force that many of us are unable to even see and much has been hidden in the cloth of religion that has made us soft, made us forgiving, made us forgetful too. And made us lost sight of the enemy. Because sometimes when you, when you have an enemy, you are more focused, you know. Sometimes when there's no enemy, the energies become scattered out. So I have to begin to again to come to a consciousness as to who is the enemy to the black struggle and the black revolution. Well, who is the enemy? The enemy is the same force that defeated Mr. Sharp. Is the same force that defeated Mr. Garvey. The same government that hounded Marcus, Marcus. Garvey until he died in London. His heart burst. Yeah, and perhaps it was even poisoned slowly too. I have no doubt. Yeah, because we understand the methods. He was in the wrong country yeah. at the time. Well, you know, the country that of his birth had rejected him outwardly, you know. So, like him get stranded. Is the same government yeah. I am talking about <laughs> yeah. that defeated um, all Paul Bogle. All of our work are heroes. Yes. Yes. Mr. Garden yeah. is the same government that did it it was the government of the queen of england all right which translates directly on the basis of of of, of succession mm -hmm. into the same government today of we have today what i'm attempting to do is to show you that it has not changed mm. it has remained the same and all of these people who are there claiming are heroes. Yes, they did what they said they did. But it didn't change the course mm -hmm. of history that the British charted for this island yeah. and the other islands of slavery. We are today emancipated. We are today independent. And we are today free on the basis of documentation mm -hmm. signed by the British Parliament. It is not as if we, through force of intellect, our force and, of war machines, yeah, military force, our, yeah, that type had of force, taken yeah. this initiative yeah. ourselves. It was granted to us. <laughs> granted. So, having granted this to us we are in a status even today established mm -hmm. by the british mm -hmm. the status quo has not changed well you know it is so obvious in a jamaican situation that the status quo of the british to the governor general and his costuses and his various counties that they established it is still here are you, are you talking about england or jamaica england's control of jamaica yes through the governor generalship through these various counties, counties and costuses and uh, costos these are the same yeah, people same up people. in england it is but not a different people the deception is that no they've created a parallel government 
We what we call politicians here. Yes. And these men are now the men in parliament. So we have two governments in the country, you know. One outright to represent the queen and one supposed to represent the people. Yes. But those who represent the people really have to give homage to the queen first. So our documentation has to be signed by the governor. Yes. Even the Ganja struggle is the governor general have to sign off on that before I and I as a citizen can say the law has now been enacted. So we, as I said, certain things have remained solid as a rock in the Jamaican control when the people are maybe are traveling around more now. They're wearing different clothing now. They're plugged into technology into them ears. But the infrastructure is solidly British. And continues to solidly be British. However, you see, as far as pain is concerned, mm. the people are happy with what is going on. They might cry out, you mm -hmm. know, but it is not a cry of real pain. Of wrath and Because anger, if yeah. it were, they would not vote for the PNP in the next general election. Mm -hmm. Because all that they have done is change one method of government to another method similar to what happens when the British have an election. Mm -hmm. In fact, the British might even have greater changes on the basis of the election than the Jamaican yes, situation. Yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. The Jamaican definitely. situation is straight to the book yeah. of how England agree to the independence that them give us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. England don't have a constitution, but them give us one. You ever see it yet? The constitution? Yeah. Oh, yes. Well, you know, Simon, though, I've never read it yet. And this is part of the enslavement as a mentality, you know. Yeah. I'm live in America for a while, and the first thing I'm teaching at junior high school is the Constitution. Yes. So the powers of the political structure is, is, is the people on the island, obviously, are not being intellectually prepared to even challenge the root of governance here. No, and, the and black man in North America now had a different condition, though, you know. Because of the exposure to revolutionary thinking. Because we know that in the early 1800s, enough black men decided to go to Africa, you know. Mm -hmm. The movement from f to repatriate is not a Rastaman movement or a Jamaican movement, you know. It's a black man in America who had enough of white man domination and had access to resources and intellectual powers that they realized, you know, something, this place is not for I, you know. But before and during that movement and migration, America had to develop what they call civil rights laws. And these civil rights laws you know what was supposed to protect the black people you now from the brutality of the system. But it also revealed the fact that the Africans were not even considered to be citizens. Because citizens shouldn't really need civil rights. There was no civil rights for the white man. He was considered a natural citizen. So with all the struggles of black people in North America, they might have fight dog and prison and brutality. And out of that struggle now, we would see man leadership begin to rise up. Mega Evers, or Martin Luther King Jr. And so them kind of man you know, became the face of the, the black struggle in North America and the resistance to that struggle by the powers that be wasn't very simple but because of the Christianity we were under the belief that we could just love white people and the more we love them is the more them would accept we and we could just literally love them to death but Sometimes we realize uh, this love thing, my brethren, I have a question this love thing now, you know. Because are we supposed to love our enemies? Where we get that teaching there from? 
The Bible. The same Bible again. Yes. Love our enemies. Yes. More than we love ourselves. Yes. Well, you know, there was a black man who came up into the struggle. And he was not a Christian. He was a Muslim. Yes. And this bridge in here now changed him name. Him link with a Christian surname. The way he became conscious of him black self. And he was, he was called Malcolm X. So a lot of people don't know what X means. Some people think X means 10. But it's a man who recognizes that the surname, the S-I-R name. Some people think it's S-U-R, you know. But it's S-I-R, the yeah. surname, the name of the sir, the name of the plantation owner. And he decided to reject that. And X really represents, in mathematics, the unknown. And he begin to change consciousness now. This is a, an attempt to change consciousness because no matter what you change, you know, whether you change your clothes, whether you change your diet, if you don't change your consciousness, you still basically remain a slave. So th what supported the change now was a different religion, the religion of Islam. And here's where we find now Islam and Christianity you now seem to be always at odds. So Malcolm X now tried the road, the road of Islam. And because the American prisons are constantly filled with black people, Elijah Muhammad realized that, you know, this is a good place to recruit, recruit soldiers for the black army. And Islam became now one of the tools for a black man now to rally around, to, to redefine himself outside of that Christian box. Where we know what happened to the black leaders who rise up in America. The man feel the bullet. Because that society still unwilling for black people to demonstrate their thinking power, to demonstrate their ability to lead. And the civil rights movement, as much as it brought a global awareness now to problems in America. Can I remember before you know, even the sportsmen had to go and protest, you know. The Olympians had to go to the Olympics and protest, you know. Mm -hmm. Because the world was under the illusion that everything in America was nice. It was nice for the white people in America. But it was, it was brutal for the Indians and brutal to the Africans. Much has not changed. As much as the technology has improved, the quality of life, the status of the black people, what the struggle seemed to have opened up was what they call opportunities. Mm -hmm. So black people saw go to more colleges. And not only saw go to more colleges now, we started to become more cognizant of Africa. Enough black men in America now start to recognize Africa. That by the time we get to the 70s, consciousness, they reach a level where black men saw say black is beautiful. Black people saw to celebrate them here. In other words, we move from the conch and the curl to natural here. We start sing soul music. So there was a serious awakening in the 70s. And there was, there was an urgency in the lyrics of the music of mm -hmm. the black people towards self, towards enlightenment and just towards a self-identity yes, that had been missing for a the long time exactly I, I i have a distinct memory of that because i passed through america during that time the the muslims you know they they did not adhere to Islam mainstream. Mm -hmm. They call themselves black Muslims. Black Muslims and, and that that didn't allow for a smooth flow in the world of Islam. Mm -hmm. Although it is not as if Islam is a one dimension organization. There are many different strands of Islam so I can't see why the black Muslims 
should have been disturbed. But they were preaching some doctrine there that was a little bit off the mainstream of what Islam was saying. You know, so that off the mainstream thing, you know, that there's a group of Muslims that they were calling themselves the five percenters. The five percenters now were a set of black Muslims in America, you know, whose ideology you now frightened the white man, you know. Yes. Because the man I'm going to some scientific analysis of blackness, you know, you know, and began to realize that the white man wasn't really a natural being. Like it was like an artificial construction, like a clone. Yes. And they began to promote these ideologies in America. That when Martin King, when um, Malcolm X would speak about the white man and say, boy, I smell like a dog, when, a wet dog, and begin to draw the analogy between the animal kingdom now and the white man, it disturbed the white man seriously. Because Christianity don't dare go that road, you know. No. Christianity hugging up everybody because we are all one. But the 70s consciousness of the black Muslims began to make black man see himself as a separate being, an original being, the way he was even before contact with the Arabians or the Europeans. And that can be very frightening, you know, to those who control the power, because it's about identity. And the more the black man became conscious of his identity, the more his consciousness rose. So the 70s now, even in the Caribbean, the music changed. They have the, the, the real outburst of Rastafari music in the 70s, talking about African liberation. You, the, had, you had some Calypsonians yeah, man, the doing whole, the same, doing same thing, thing you know? man. The yes. whole thing spreading globally, you know. It's a global spread, you know. And the Europeans had to respond to this. And not only was it racially growing, the political side of it was about socialism. And socialism was promoting the collectivity of the people as opposed to capitalism, which was the driving force of the white American economy. Mm -hmm. The individual. Yes, the individual. So we had this great collision in the 70s. And the white man would not have it anymore. They would not have it anymore. So by the time we're approaching the end of the 70s, I man cite some dramatic changes happening in the globe, you know. Because even Jamaica now, Jamaica tried the socialism to the extreme. And we saw what happened when the CIA responded to Manley's attempt to lead the country towards Russia. You know, and we had the Cuban experience. We had the experience of uh, Maurice Bishop. They take him out physically. So it's a real war was being fought between forces, because the black people now were on the way up out of slavery. But something happened again serious in the 70s, because somehow the process started to reverse. And I think the change really began with when the American government under Jimmy Carter, for the first time now, they had a new enemy, which was the oil producing countries. The Iranians, the Iraqians, these people now began to realize that, that they have a power that was always there, but it wasn't obvious to them, which is energy. And before the Arabs and the Muslims from the Middle East came to the force, the world only had two powers, you know, recognizable. It was Russia and America, what they call East and West. So you're either with the East or you with the West. You're either communist and socialist or you're capitalist. That was basically how the world was divided. But by the end of the 70s, there was a new player. The oil producing countries. And America had a, had a president named Jimmy Carter, who was a peanut farmer and a Christian. Mm -hmm. And this was the beginning of America's one-term president because the white man don't like to feel lesser than himself he don't like to face defeat and the america were being held ransom now by the oil producing countries 
What, how did America respond to that? They removed Jimmy Carter. And who did they put in? A man from Hollywood. Reagan. Yes, a cowboy. So I and I must look at this and realize that it don't require no intellectual white man to be in the White House, you know. We could come to that first and foremost. Well, uh, the <coughs> perhaps the most glaring example is Mr. Trump. No, we don't reach a Trump yet. No, sure, wait, wait, begin. <laughs> yes. sure, it's a trend yeah. that people should not be dis disturbed about Trump now, you know. <laughs> they should not be disturbed because the pattern of America. Can you remember, say, Bush follow, you know. Mm -hmm. Bush never bright either, you know. It didn't seem to be. Right, intellectually bright. No. So we must recognize that if the, white, if, the, if the man in the White House is not intellectually bright, don't feel no way it's a white America upset about that, you know. Because them realize it's not about the intellect of the white man, it's, it's the ideology that they represent. So Reagan came as a cowboy and he came to restore the American image. And we know what happened after that. All sort of drug laws began to be tightened in America. And we find that enough black men now so find themselves going into prison for all sorts of minor offenses. And the campaign was on globally now to turn back socialism. Reagan had support from Margaret Thatcher and my support from the Pope. And they had a long-term vision to pull down Russia, you know, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. They had a long-term vision for that. I really believe that by the end of the 1980s, there was no more Soviet Union. There was no more force called socialism. Where were the black people in that mix? Warm to we in the, in the 90s? Well, mostly, mostly, even while all of that is going on, you know, the business of day-to-day -day survival would take up the total life yeah. and energies of African people in the dias diaspora. It didn't matter where them was. It would be the same thing because you see the struggle that was going on. Yeah. We are fragments in a European civilization that developed around us and to a large extent was fueled by us. But we were never in the European civilization. It is like those who are Christians, who love the Christianity so much that they want to be like Christ. They want to be white. Like snow. But it don't matter. It, it, it don't matter. How much you want to be you white. You can't white. It's it, it not going to happen. It can't work. Well, you know, in the 80s also, money now became a crucial element now in black people's life. You in say the money? 80s, yeah, the thing called money. Yeah. Because I remember the 70s, you know, was about sharing and volunteerism and just giving up yourself to make sure things happen. But in the 80s, man, them bringing a thing called neoliberalism. And everything now became money. Everything now required money. And there was a, to me, there was a great awakening in the black people that suddenly, if you want that thing over there, so, you have to have money. There was no more donations, no more volunteering, and there was a massive spike in prices. So all of a sudden now, the 80s became turbulent financially for enough black people across the world. Banks, even in Jamaica, started collapse. And the whole attitude towards money now became very obvious to people. Because previously that, you know, them tell us that money is not important. Remember now the Christian teaching about money? What did them tell you, Malcolm? What did them tell you as a youth about money? That money is what? The lack of all, what, the love of money is the root of our evil? What did them tell you? Well, I, I, I was familiar with the concept of the love of money yeah. being the root of all evil. That stayed with me <laughs> for the longest time. <laughs> and I tried my best yeah. not to love money. 
Okay. But, but I, I want to make you know, you know, that I think this thing has dogged me all my life. You know? mm-hmm. <laughs> this, this desire not to not love to money. Not to love money. Yeah, because but at the same time, no. The education system don't encourage you to even pursue money either. It just tell you say, you must get a job and get food, clothes and shelter. Mm-hmm. We're in the mix, them tell you say, you must get money. Well, I suppose there's an assumption mm-hmm. that if you get a job, you will have some money. To do what? To buy food. Pay the bills. Yes. Buy the food. Yes. Pay for the shelter. Get ready for the next pay period. Okay. That is it. You but, but that alone, that alone can make you wealthy. Or are we not supposed to be wealthy? No. No, even now we're not supposed to be wealthy. The society is not constructed to facilitate an even distribution or flow of the wealth. There is no attempt to accommodate that experience. People will receive according, this is under normal circumstances, mm-hmm. according to their status in life. All right. We're going to go to a break. I'm going to come forward now and really explore this money thing. Yes. Architects, draftsmen, and surveyors, get your drawings printed in high-quality professional standards. We can satisfy your printing needs. Whether it is for presentation to your clients or for submitting building and subdivision application, make it VJ Printing Services. Whether drawing by hand or with computer-aided softwares, we will plot your negatives and print the copies as you need. We do high-quality white paper printing that is water-resistant and never fades, unlike traditional blueprint. For more information, call VJ Printing at Eight nine three two two six six. For complete auto repairs and services, come to Aiken Auto Technology, located at 33 Bombo Crescent, Port Antonio, Jamaica. We offer specialist services in wheel alignment and wheel balancing, brake drum and disc rotary servicing, state-of-the-art ultrasonic cleaning and testing of your fuel injectors. We also stock an assorted range of auto service parts, tires and motorcraft batteries. If we don't have it, we will source it for you. Call us at 876-715-5205. Or email AconAutoTech16 at gmail.com. Acon Auto Technology, beyond the typical auto mechanic shop. Planning a party, club night out, stage show, a gospel concert, or even a business sales event? Let Styles FM be a part of your promoting tool. Take advantage of our low price promotion packages with commercials, interviews, giveaways, reviews, and much more. We have special offers when you mix and match and bundle your options. Contact us at 876-286-9216 or 439-5160. Styles FM for the most effective way to exploit your marketing dollar. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, conveniently located at 15 Boundbrook Crescent, Port Antonio. For a large space of single and double rooms at reasonable rate, Wi-Fi, cable TV, breakfast to order, 24-hour security, CC cameras, parking, snack bar and lounge. Beautiful scenery of the Caribbean Sea. We're willing to assist with additional accommodation, such as fridge in your room, coffee machine and so much more. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, proud sponsor of the Metamorph with Dr. Iman Black live on Styles FM Mondays 9 p.m. to midnight. Call Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House at 715-1644. Eternity is a temptation of time. To dance is to be master of time. His pleasure is to control mine. Metamorphosis continuing. Dr. Iman Black here in studio with my brother, Ras Makunen. Ecclesiastes 10. You know that when people speak about the Bible, you know, sometimes them go on as if it's just one book. 
when it's really a, a collection of books. Yes. Many people are totally confused. When a man says, you read the Bible, and you say, which book now? It's like him, him, him stuck. But it's a collection of books. As a matter of fact, several of the books have been removed by the Roman Catholic forces. So when a man talks, if you read the Bible, you have to ask him, which book you read? Is it Genesis? Is it Revelations? Is it that? But two of the books that are in the Bible, I think are the only two books that deal with practical thinking versus religious ideas. And one of the books is the book of Proverbs, which deals with things that are practical and advice that will apply in the world today. Another book is Ecclesiastes. Now, I, I've never been to a church and hear much reference by any of the preachers about these two books. And if you strip the Bible of all of the books except those two, people would wake up and begin to look into the world as a practical world more than a place that they must have passed through because I'm going to somewhere else better. So the book of Ecclesiastes tells us, Ecclesiastes 10, verse 19, it says, A feast is made for laughter. Wine makes life merry. And money is answer for everything. Now, out of the Bible that come in now. Mm -hmm. It is also reinforced further by saying, For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. So we are seen to be a, a race of people who are strapped for cash. <laughs> like we are cash starved. And we don't really have an ideological approach to building cash. It's like we're even free of the word cash. Well, the thing is, we have been left immediately outside of the money-making experience. Even though we are slaves? Yes, we don't make money. We don't make money? No. So what do we do? We don't make money. You mean, you, mean, you mean we don't print it? That's what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> we, we do not control the process of production that leads to a package of money. Mm -hmm. When we talk about making money, we're talking about getting a job. Getting a job and laboring. But you will have persons yeah. in the European society who know all about money making as a real practical experience. Mm -hmm. You see, if you control the printing presses that make money, I think it is safe to say that you are almost 90% home. If you are the person who must now find ways and means to get money from the man who, who, can who control, control the printer, the the why is a long journey that? And that is the journey yeah. that we're on. And you see, from the time that I was born until now, yeah. it is that journey that I have known. Having no other knowledge of any other real experience towards acquiring money, the, the concept of the printing press fascinates me. Mm. However, I have to be careful because all of the people who I have known who attempted to get charge of one of those printed presses mm -hmm. have faced governmental yes. disdain yes. and come under severe persecution because, let us face it, you're not supposed to have a machine for making money. It will liberate you from the present status that you're in mm -hmm. and the present status that any man is in inside of this society is ordained 
based on where you are within the different strata mm -hmm. inside of the society. So, so what do you think about the, the idea that, boy, you're, when you're dead, you're going to leave it. You can't carry it with you when you're dead. You ever, you ever hear them, them talk to it? Yes. So we are about to try to get plenty of it for. Usually that is what the poor people them say. Yeah. The man them who really have money yeah. and who are enjoying the pursuit of it. Yeah. Them not really care about all them kind but of things. But is it really the pursuit them enjoy or the use of it? Because we have been pursuing this thing for a very long time to know, you know. Well, it's, it's two different <laughs> levels of pursuit. Yeah. How we pursue it yeah. different from how them pursue it. Okay. Maybe them how them use it to different than how we use it to? Yes, man. They have a knowledge of yeah. money yeah. that is essential in, in, in order to understand what you're getting into yeah. and what you're getting out of. Right, right. Yes. Their information based concerning money is generally something that they acquired from them was in the crib. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is handed down by their parents to them. The average black African person, they never had any intimate relationship with the business of acquiring money. They were instructed based on the societal norms to get an education, get religion, or you can start with get religion, mm -hmm. get an education, get your quali qualifications, get a job. That is money. That is, that is, our, that is our part. Yes, that is it. Yeah, to our that is money. But all I know, so now, so when we follow that part, and like the people who are listening to the metamorphosis now, this is a Monday, and they're on that path. And some of them hope to get some compensation on Saturday or Friday. Yes. All right. So when we do get it now, what has been our problem in the usage of it? Because obviously, we don't get a train of, of even use it. All right. Our training is that... You, are, 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 are we getting a, a wrong concept of how to use the money? Yeah, well, I, I think it's a wrong concept. The, but, but it is deeply entrenched. True, you know. true. The, 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 the concept that is entrenched is that once you acquire the money, yeah. you must proceed to spend it. All right. It's, it's not that you must save it or you must you know, put it under the mattress. Yeah. The whole idea is to use it. The unfortunate thing about that mentality, though, you know, is for most of the people, that's all them can do with it. Mm. The total value of what them get would not be 5% of what them want. So the concept of saving or investing become concepts that are hard, alien hard, hard to grasp y you couldn't yeah. grasp yeah, it yeah. because what you're trying to grasp right now is breakfast you know and maybe supper in the evening yeah, yeah. it's and not enough to get the lunch yeah yeah and then out of this you must build a life no life can build what you have to do is go back to work all right so now so like a vicious cycle. But I am with, uh, with a suggest that we have to find a way to break these cycles more than simply describe them. I mean I said today I know we have to reprioritize what are our basic needs. Because the same system gives the impression that the basic need is food first, followed by clothing and then shelter. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying today, you know, if we were to reverse that format and begin to make shelter the first need, we may begin to change around the whole concept of how we live and, what we, and how we actually get the most out of our money. 
Because if, all of, if most of our money is going to eating it out, and you know what happened to food, it goes into the body and come back out, then we, we will never ever see any tangible result of the money. Um, I am going to propose, my brother, yeah. that for the majority of the people, them, there will be no tangible outcome from the money. Because the money is a foreign commodity. You have no control over it. Even though we have it here on a local level, mm -hmm. it's not here it come from. All right, so, so you see, back to the, the concept of producing, who, who producing it? Look, there has to be some kind of partnership yeah. between the producer of money and the user of money that allows some amount of equilibrium to exist between the two forces. So what about if we look at what our ancients used to do when they used to recognize that in order to excrete, free yourself from the, the hand-to-mouth living, that we shall form partnerships. Because it, 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 it appears that in order to break the cycle, you have to be able to have what is called a lump sum of money. Yes. And that lump sum, the old Ian Chains recognized it too, you know, because I remember the system around a long time, you know. Mm -hmm. A long time, we were batter, 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 bruised with money. And the system at that time was that if we were to have partners amongst ourselves, that when we throw a partner, because it's still being done at a certain level, you know, and you get a lump sum, that lump sum don't go to food. That lump sum go into what we call an investment. But I'm certain that I know that investment ought to be land first. And much of our people don't, I remember, so, them, that's why I'm called a squatter still, you know, because we still don't own the land. Yes. Because our priority is not on owning land, but it's on getting food. So if we were to reorganize our priorities, because I have money, loving money, you know. I don't think people love money, you know. People love what money can provide. They love the thing that the money can provide. It can provide the shelter, it can provide the medicine, it provides access to the goods and services where everybody needs. So if we were to rewire our thinking about this concept of money, maybe we could break that cycle. You see, so even though the producers of the money are distant from us, our granny them used to multiply money in a way that today's people can't do. I want to tell you, say, the ability of the older folks to multiply money yeah. was still limited, man. Yeah, it was limited, I Be know. Because you, you, you see the whole business of circulation of money. Yeah distribution of money and cancellation of money, destruction of money and so on and so forth. It is a very complex phenomenon. It, it goes, it is mind boggling because in a very general sense, you know, you don't have any massive amounts of money just floating around that would give a they could say as entrepreneur, mm -hmm. the ability to become rich overnight. But I mean, but coming rich overnight might not be such a practical thing in the first place. And if he became rich overnight, yeah. how would he be able to survive because of the different agencies that control the money who would now instantly pick him up as a man who shouldn't have control. Yeah, but him can't, it no matter. He might buy himself, him himself, arm himself, and defend himself the way others defend themselves when they have money. Uh, well, you see, no, because money is a sound defense, you know, remember, I just read it, you know. You, you see, <laughs> you see the, the man who never have yeah. that money yeah. before, I'm not saying it's not a defense, you know, but it's not a sound defense. Yeah, you man. have to have a knowledge of it, you know. Well, that's the whole point. And I'm saying yes. the, the knowledge that they're giving us is that is the knowledge of how to use it, which is really a misuse of money. You see, I don't think the families train us, nor the school, nor the church. The church itself take away our money that we should be investing. Mm -hmm. What is called tithing, 
is our investment money that. That is what we should be putting together to, to secure property and land and real estate. We, we secure it in property. We secure in property in heaven. Yeah, that is where, that's, that's the point. Sometimes we're not so, so not necessarily have a lack of money that is beating us. We are, we are misdirecting our money. We're not directing money in the right areas and we're not putting it into the right priority. You see, you my, see. my brother, I, I, I defer with you, yeah. you know, based on the local source of the money. Yeah. The money is a manufactured product. Even so, you can get it if you have something to exchange for it. Remember, no, no. It's a, it's a commodity that if you have services and goods, you can get it. Yes. So if we were to, if we had our land, then that's the basis of, of goods. Because people have to eat food. Mm -hmm. People have to live somewhere. So many things said is a is a false city in, in our teaching. Why we're so poor, yet money passed through your hands so regularly. We know man who no millions pass through them and, and then broke. So I don't think it's just really we're not being able to manufacture money to large numbers. I think it's how we've been trained to exercise this money thing. And if we begin to, if we continue to, exp to use our money for food first, we will always be broke. And always thinking about our belly first. When if we were focusing our money on land, then we could never be squatters. We'd have a base to build an empire upon, because you have to have a land. So I'm saying, no, between the church and the education system, we don't know what to do with our money. Because, okay, Rockefeller did with it. One of the Rockefeller brothers them did with it at 109, mm -hmm. right? And I hear a comment, say, boy, look, watch, you see him dead and couldn't take him money with him. But him didn't have to cash with him. No. His generation is here to spend it. So, it's, so you don't know, so be trying to carry money with you, but you have to build it and leave it. That when you use them born, them born in a situation where they don't have access to money, so I think we have, a, we have been given a lot of false teachings about this thing called money. That some people fear money because they think it's going to make them evil if they get plenty of money. When I was at high school, I asked you in the class, how many want to be rich? It's only the Indian and the Chinese man raise their hand. You see, the value of money you would, see, have, would have been understood by them. Aye. You understand? Because they get it from inside their own family. The, av the average black child. Yeah never wanted to be rich in the time that I was Even today, up. you ask a youth, uh, uh, even big people, well, they just want to be comfortable. You never hear an argument there yet? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. What comfortable mean? They can't even classify comfortable in terms of money, you know. But you still have to have plenty of money. If you want to join up with a crew, yeah. all you have to do is repeat that line. You'll be welcome. OK. Yeah. So my thing say, uh, we have to continuously work out a philosophy that we learn how to manage the money. Because look, spending and saving don't regenerate money. Because as I would say, you spend and you save and you go into the savings for the emergency. And when the emergency too long, you have to start borrowing. And if you can't borrow anymore, you're going to start beg. And if you can't beg, you're going to start thief. So it's a downward spiral in our approach to money. So we have to lose the fear of being rich. White man call it filthy rich, you know, because it have a smell. Mm -hmm. And we don't, we don't like filthy smells, you know. So <laughs> the, the thing just disconnecting us from securing money. You see, what I'm trying to bring home to you, you know, mm -hmm. is, is that the, the, the knowledge that would allow a majority of people to acquire money, yeah. the knowledge base is just not there. It was never taught to them. But we were taught to work. And, and so, you see that work? Yeah. Them accept that that is what the work can do for them, you know. Yeah. Carry them to the next pay day. But the business have been free to spend. No, man, we have to invest first. That is, what, that is the beating. We can't be free to spend, we must be free to invest. That is where I think we're getting the beating in the rest of. Mm -hmm. Because the spending me, we're broke again. 
<laughs> but isn't that what is going on? Yeah, that, that's a point. That's, that's a whole point. That's, this is why money becomes a great issue to because we don't know how to manipulate it and invest it you, you before see, we even spend it. You see, until the time <laughs> comes, yeah. when the people have a knowledge base that would allow them yeah. to go the route of investment, yeah. no, but nobody, the, the average individual in the Caribbean or North American society, it's not really in the business of investment, you know. So, what, so when you, if you're not investing, you, you, you maintain that status where you, you can't move, you're always going to borrow next, you know. Because your savings going to run out. Yeah, remember, <laughs> remember, do you know? Yeah. The, the discussion is, you know, how to bring the knowledge yeah. of, let us say, investment yeah. to them. Well, we're trying to do it here within, within this reason here, you know, you know. Yes. Because, for example, look in North America now. Where you have entertainers and sportsmen making multi million dollars worth of contracts and rich, right? When they are said and done, you know, they don't really own much of anything, you know. They don't own a basketball team, you know. We know they don't own a stadium, you know. They don't invest the money into, 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 into real estate and properties, you know. They spend back the money. So they try to buy 10 cars and 15 houses. But they try to live in all, in other words, they don't even do that as a form of investment to generate more money. It's all about status. And you find, say, when it all is said and done, the state take back the money from them. And there's no legacy that generates money for their generation to come, that they will born in money. See, most of us don't born in money, you know, we're born in poverty. It, it is set yeah. that way. But we can break the cycle. Some of us. With knowledge. Some of us, man. But we can, that's, that's the whole point, you know. Way, yeah. The only way we could break the circle on a permanent basis, yeah. you have to own the means of production. That, uh, definitely. So what, what do we own so far? Uh, Let me say we don't own nothing. The job. No, but that's not own. It's a, it's a yes. temporary thing that you don't own that. Call the man and fire you if you don't like you. For as long as you have <laughs> that job, yeah. you can look forward to next PD. So the ownership thing now, you say manufacturing industries, those with the money have to begin to realize that we must become owners of production now. That's why I even said to you, not even a basketball, the man didn't own a stadium. There's no rich basketball player who, who even own a stadium that becomes a means of generating revenue. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin to, at our level here now, we are strong in agriculture as a basis. But we don't manufacture nothing out of, ag of, out of ag agricultural products. Where is the hemp farm? Where is investment now in a hemp factory by those who do have the money? To break that cycle. So I'm saying, it's not a lack of money. Me think it's a problem. It's a lack of the know-how. Well, clearly. You know, and if we can inform those with the money how to invest that money in a way that makes us manufacturers and not just consumers, the, 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 the cycle can break. Even if you break the cycle, man, yeah. it is going to come back. Why? Always it is going to come back to who is manufacturing the money. Eventually we'll get there, what, you know. What is, the, what is it that drives the manufacturing process? It's wealth. Are, 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 it's capital. Are, it's it's are resources. You, are you suggesting that there's anything happening in the black community that is driving the amount of money that is being manufactured? You see, the manufacturing part, remember, so there, there are banks, you know, there are institutions that, that's, you, have, you have white banks and you have black banks, you know, in the real world, you know. Yes. And all of those institutions, it's not a really matter of manufacturing, but they have access to volumes of money. So, Gaddafi, for example, in Africa, was on the long way to create his own money. Because he had the goal, he had the natural resources to back up the currency. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why they take him out too, you know. That's part of the reason why they take out Gaddafi. Because he was really threatening the money system. He was coming in with the whole of cash. Yeah, with his own money system. Yes. And the, the, the template laid down. And, and the governments get a picture and realize, say, 
you can begin to develop your own money. If you have your resources in your land, see, come back to the land again, you know, mm -hmm. Rasta. The land and your resources. We have hemp and we have ganja. There is which nothing. Is a tremendous resource, you know. There is nothing happening yeah. in the world of money that stop black people, people who own a country, yeah. who stop them. Uh, um, there's nothing happening that stop them from manufacturing money. They stop because of the system. The system don't allow a little country like Jamaica to put money out there on the market. That is where it stops, you know. Well, it's a revolutionary now. You see Haiti, Haiti show the model, you know. Haiti was a small place that used to finance them own self and have them own resources. The model is set already. We just have to revisit it to show us that we can be dumb. We can make our own money and back it up with our own resources. And, and still survive in the midst of More than survive. The model, the model depends on we still. Yes. Yeah, so I think the model is there. We have to revisit it. All the intellectuals and academics and people with things who are thinking along the lines, we must revisit Haiti, revisit Gaddafi's plan, and examine this thing a little bit more carefully. Because if we don't break that dependency cycle, we're going to be here for another 500 years under the same kind of situation. But as we move into the global situation again, and North America, where the money is in abundance and the black people have money there, and most of them are poor, many of them are rich, but the system there is governed by a white man and his banks. Mm -hmm. Now, we were saying earlier that the 80s brought a shock to the globe with the whole money thing. And the volunteering is give up. People start, start volunteering. Now everything a man do, I charge you money because it was become the, the premium. Everything now was valued by money. If a man walk with you down the road, he might say, boy, you have to give me money for that. So it became so important that at the political level now in North America, the black people, I think, were what you call in a kind of free mode. Everybody now was seeking their own money. Everybody was doing their own thing. And the unity that we had in the 70s and the early, early part of the 80s began to dissipate. There's no more black organizations anymore. People are almost afraid to say them black. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into the 90s after the break. Remember Styles FM on social media. View us on YouTube at Styles FM Radio. Follow us on Instagram at Styles FM. Like us on Twitter at Styles FM 961. Become a fan on Facebook. Styles FM 96.1. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. You want it, now you got it. Styles FM Fan Fusion Party Episode 4. Mixed Intoxication. Saturday, July 8, 2017 at the Bayview Villas. Waterfront Property. Dolphin Bayport, Antonio, Jamaica. Come hear your Styles FM DJs juggling retro hits. Retro Gunya style. From the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. Admission 500 pre-sold. 600 at the gate with flyer. 700 without flyer. Party starts at 7 p.m. sharp. Listen to Styles FM for ticket outlets or call 286-9216. Fan Fusion Party. Mixed intoxication. Dress tropically elegant. Must be 18 years and older to enter. ID required. Drink responsibly. Architects, draftsmen, and surveyors, get your drawings printed in high-quality professional standards. We can satisfy your printing needs. Whether it is for presentation to your clients or for submitting building and subdivision application, make it VJ Printing Services. Whether drawing by hand or with computer-aided softwares, we will plot your negatives and print the copies as you need. We do high-quality white paper printing that is water-resistant and never fades, unlike traditional blueprint. For more information, call VJ Printing at 8 Eight nine three two two six six. 
Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, conveniently located at 15 Boundbrook Crescent, Port Antonio. For a large space of single and double rooms at reasonable rate, Wi Fi, cable TV, breakfast to order, 24 hour security, CC cameras, parking, snack bar, and lounge. Beautiful scenery of the Caribbean Sea. We're willing to assist with additional accommodation, such as fridge in your room, coffee machine, and so much more. Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House, proud sponsor of the Metamorphosis with Dr. Iman Black, live on Styles FM, Mondays, 9 p.m. to midnight. Call Boundbrook Hilltop Guest House at 715-1644. Metamorphosis continuing. We're into the final 25 minutes of this program. We're going to advance the time frame now and look at the 90s. Two significant events. The fall of the Berlin Wall and the release of Nelson Mandela. And the fall of the Berlin Wall triggered off a thing that is presently gripping the world. It's called globalization. That came about with a demise of the Union of Soviet Social Republic, the end of the Soviet Republics, and therefore the end of one major superpower, the Russians. So the, the, the impression around the world was that there was no more communist threat. There was no more socialist threat. Both of those threats had died under the demise and under the coming down of the Berlin Wall. There was no more East and West. So there has to be a new way to view the world. And this new way, way was being called globalization, which is really another way of saying Americanization creeping around the world. Or you could say Euro, Euro, Europeanization. Well, it's really America leading it, you know. Mm -hmm. Right, so I, I rather say Americanization. And the Europe, European and Americans are cousins, and they're always hand in hand. But the other event now, the release of Nelson Mandela, Created deception on the black people. That this gave the black people globally a feeling that now black people free. Because Mandela was being held as a symbol of incarceration of all black people. Mm -hmm. I remember now, you know, the Europeans, they must start singing song about free Mandela. It became a whole party. Enough money make after the free Mandela campaign. And so when they released Mandela and the wall come down almost in one go, it's like black people relax because them say all apartheid done. Remember all them talk then? Mm -hmm. Apartheid come to a close. There was no more racial hatred anymore. It was just one love and them all turned Bob Marley's song into the song of the century. And it, everything was just one love and everything was seen to be hunky-dory. This is the 1990s. But you say within that now, this concept of globalization now would bring America to a situation where they had nobody to fight against as a superpower. They were the lone power, separate from FIFA. You know, FIFA is always there as a big power. Mm -hmm. But they became the lone superpower. And Americans would tell you, and the white man would tell you, that they always need somebody to war against. Is that keep him going? And we've been saying that from the beginning, right? That yes. war like vibrations. So with the Russians no longer the enemy, America had to create a new enemy. And the new enemy came to the front in the 1990s. It started when America decided to enter the Gulf and took on the Iraqians in defense of the Kuwaitians. They called the first Gulf War. Mm -hmm. This is the beginning now of Americanization and the effects that we're feeling today. So the first Bush launched a war and that war would just be the beginning of the 
crisis that we face today. That war was about oil. It was about energy. And again, it didn't start with Bush. It started with Jimmy Carter from the 70s. When the Americans swear say they would never get caught again like this without oil. So here we have a new dispensation now. War in the Middle East. Battle for oil. And the Americans would continue the struggle until the second Bush came to power. This second Bush now, as we say now, nothing to do with intelligence, but a representation of the military complex. Same thing that Trump represents today. The military industrial complex that really run America, the Pentagon. And they would create an enemy in a character now called Bin Laden. You remember Bin Laden? Definitely. They created Al Qaeda. They created Afghanistan. And they created a war against Afghanistan. And they bombed the hell out of Afghanistan. And they all sort of shock and awe and destruction on the people of that section of the world. They even manufacture weapons of mass destruction and give it to Saddam. Yes. But they couldn't find it when they're ready. So Saddam as you now became the new enemy, along with Bin Laden. And America now had somebody to fight against. But there's a drama by 2001. Remember that drama, my brethren? It's called 9-11. It's when the Americans really lower them defense to allow them own building to bomb up. To me, they manufacture that self-destruction self movement, brought down the Twin Towers, and all of a sudden now, there was a greater enemy called Saddam and Iraq. And so the Americans then begin to wage a war on what they call now terror. This is, a, this is Bush's argument, you know, a war on terror. I would mention earlier now, you know, that terrorism has been in America from the days of the Ku Klux Klan. Well, <coughs> the Ku Klux Klan along with the state, because the state was also responsible for terrorizing the Africans. Yeah. So terrorism from now yes. wasn't something new that was being created. Black people always felt the wrath of terrorism. But it was now being used as a political ideology. And America now would declare that they are going to go into war against terrorism. But I think it's a war of terrorism. You see, America, America, when they declare themselves, you know, going on a crusade against terrorism, it is a joke. Hmm. Serious one too. One of the most terrorists of all organizations is the state machinery mm. of America. Yes, sir. When you talk about terror, you know, suppose you were living in Baghdad when America was carpet bombing Baghdad. Mm -hmm. What more terror than that? Just imagine. You know? Suppose you were living in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. When Man America was carpet bombing, bombing and Afghanistan. Tora Bora and some places. But you know, so them go back there where they go and drop the mother of all bombs. I, I heard about that incident. <laughs> yes. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Trump. Trump, no. Can you see? It's a pattern, you know. We must try to make all listeners realize that this thing that does, Trump don't just come out of nowhere, you know. No. Trump is a, pro a product, you know, of the white Anglo Saxon. Protestants. Yes, that is who Trump <laughs> is. You know? And as I had mentioned earlier now, after Bush carry America into the bushes and make America shame that even them citizens now were being ridiculed around the world. They were, everywhere they were, they were, they were a threat. They might be hiding. There was an incident happening in Iraq, you know, where a journalist take off his shoes and fling after Bush head, you know. I saw it on television. Yeah, man, a Bush duck, you know. Yes. No. That, I think, is the lowest level that the state of white America had ever reached. Yes, because I hear it's a special kind of insult. It is a low, nowhere else in the world has this ever happened to a leader. Mm -hmm. Where a man take off a shoes and fling after him, you know, to show you this Dean. Is that you, that bum? You know? Yes. So, when white America reached this point, globally, 
Them get a low point with Nixon, you know, but that was a moral, that was the beginning of the moral decay in America. Mm -hmm. The Watergate now was the beginning of the moral decay. What Trump going on with is also a continuation of that moral decay. But the, the shoes throwing incident make America, white America, shame. I never know so white America could have shame for anything that them do. And it's under that shame now they brought in the black man. It's a shame of a white America, you know, you know. Mm -hmm. Force them on to bring in a man who would remove the shame. So need a man who was intelligent. Them couldn't bring back one of them kind, you know. Like a McCain or one of them like white guys who don't, you know. They might have bring in a superstar, because you know America stay. And the black man reach any highest level, him can't normal, you know. He might have be super. So them reach Obama. When Obama came with very nice language. Obama started to reach out to the Muslim world. Obama started talking about peace. And white America began to get back some respect. But as I know, they're not happy. No, because <laughs> peace is a foreign language. I tell you. Peace, yes. But peace at what cost? cost. If you are willing to tow the American line, or the European line for that matter. Yeah. Peace, yes. Yes, yes. But yes. the moment you cross that line, are when, you object? Yes. And you object too loud yeah, man, to the, policies the that The nature of the white man surface again. And the nature of the white man is President Trump. Yes. That is the nature of yes. the white man. What you're getting when you get Trump is you're getting the real deal you see this was vital because obama spent too long in the in the white house they was hoping that him would only do one term and come out yes and by some glitch <laughs> <laughs> no I, th I think it is I, th I think it must be credited to obama's intellect it's, it's, his ability to survive may I tell you, in the face may I tell you of, of the all most the white bigotry, <laughs> the most racism, and then you know, critically know what keep him is his woman, mm -hmm. and that is what shake up white America is the dignity of his woman. Yeah, man, that's why I call her name first. You know, yeah, the it's, occupation it's, of the white house. Yeah, it's house. Michelle. Yes, hurt America. You know, not Obama. You know, what is she doing in the white in house? In the white house. The children of slaves. You ever seen it like that? Yes. This Dean. So, the black people in America you now who were celebrating Obama and thinking that he was going to make life for them easier don't really understand no. the system that they, even they, that, even what they live in. Rasta know that he can make life easier for the black people. Them. What he did was make it more bearable mm. in terms of the imagery mm -hmm. available to black people. Same, same. Now you are able to have an image of a black yeah, man yeah. in the White House. But guess what happened now? Black children. It unleashed the Ku Klux Klan in the police force. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they, they yeah were, man. They they were, them, take, them resent the idea now and decide to show it in a freedom way. <clears throat> so the Re-emergence now of the Klansmen happened under the Obama regime because somebody had to fight back. And the, the, the Klansmen who were never ever out of American scenario. No. They have always been in the police force. They've always been in law enforcement. Yeah, man, the army too. The army, the military. These are the places where the Klansmen dwell. And then begin to show them power. And you notice now, you know, that there was a, like a, a campaign by the police to kill black people. Yes. Until the, the black people produced some martyrs. Mm -hmm. Because the black people produced about three or four martyrs. These were veteran American soldiers okay. yes. who went out there. Yeah. Fully armed, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. with the knowledge yeah. that when them finish the work that them doing, they too would die. Yes, yes, yes. yes and yeah. when those came on the scene, now it kind of cooled Calm down the, the white temperament yes. of the white Ku Klux Klan. 
I don't think them man was Christians. Because those martyrs now apparently weren't afraid of dying. Most Christians are afraid to die, but they want to go to heaven. Yeah, I know, I know. I've, I've, I've seen Very it. Very conflicting. I've seen it. There. It's, it's hard, though, you know, this dying business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. because the fact that they don't want to die in order to achieve their greatest glory is telling you that there's a little doubt mm -hmm. in the back of their minds mm -hmm. that when you're dead, you're really gone to the white man heaven yes yes yes, yes. if there was no doubt then dying would be would a be, pleasure when you see the islam man them just going at it <laughs> yeah call them you know, heaven talk too tough you know mm -mm. they must go in. but look at it now the the whole the the idea of not wanting to die i mean let's just say everybody want to live but then everybody will die. Mm -hmm. But perhaps there should be a cause behind a one's death more than just dying in vain. Well, it, it, you it, know, it, since everybody going to face the same exit. Yes, you, you see, the thing is, the way the Europeans have constructed their cause, it becomes necessary for us to have our own cause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and not only the cause, but the relationship of that cause to all of the other variables associated with that entrance, exit theory. Yes. Yeah. We, the black people, desperately need a construction of exactly what happens after death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Away you go. Yeah, and what and what is what what is going where? If anything going anywhere in the first place. Yes. There has to be a a specific drama mm -hmm. that speaks to existence after life. The Egyptians have it, you know. And, not, and, not, and like I said, we don't know, you know. We have our own ideology a long time about the afterlife, you know. Yes. It's a Christian thing come confused, you know, you know. And the confusion is major. It's deep. Yes. I Question why them say rest in peace. I question that RIP business, you know. Yeah. Because why should Garvey rest in peace? And why should Bogo rest in peace? They might must stay at, in the war. You know? Yeah, because so, the war continues. Yeah, the war never afforded them a victory. Yeah, so why we must tell our soldiers that they must rest in peace? We should encourage them to continue the struggle. Rest in war. Rest in the war, same yeah. way. Me tell my you, let me know. So look, no run RIP for me, you know. Yeah, man, put S A W stay at war. <laughs> 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 yeah, because that is part of the deception. Wherein we think say the war is over. But the war continues in the afterlife. Ah. You see it. You see, you see, this this carry me right back to what happens. After life. Yeah. And then there's the children, you know. Because after life, as far as I'm concerned, it's not about I, you know, but it's about the youths that we leave. Because that is the next generation and that is I incarnation. In other words, now, we have to reconstruct, as I say, or we visualize this transition period. Mm -hmm. Because what is it we're trying to save? We shouldn't be trying to save anything. We're supposed to be releasing ourselves into the, the said. Into the next generation, which yes. is our children. Because my father is in me, and my grandfather was in my father, and my great grandfather was in my great grandfather. But, so, but you see that, that, that connectedness yeah. is, is now generally absent yes, I, from the African mind. Right now. The African yeah. mind is not seeing anything beyond the moment Jesus saved them. Yeah, right, all right. Everything else before yeah. was, was um, vanity. Mm hmm, mm hmm. The moment of salvation, the important moment, is when them accept Jesus as them personal saviour. What a thing. And then these people who have been saved from a questionable value, mm -hmm. because that is a question I always want to know, what is it that you were saved, saved from? Was it, broke, was, it, was it poverty, broke pocket? Yet at the same time, let me encourage you to stay poor, you know, because the nearer you are to poverty, the nearer you are to Jesus. You know? 
supposed to <laughs> according to the according Christian to the, rhetoric, of course, rhetoric. Of course, but if of you course. talk to the European, you don't find no, them no, in no, poverty. No, 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 that. no, no, support that at all. The actual liberty is different from the rhetoric. Yes, I. Yes. Unfortunately, we now accept the rhetoric, rhetoric. as the liberty. Yes, I. As part of the confusion. Yeah, man. So they say to you, know, them say, do as I say, but not as I do. Mm -hmm. And we hold on to that. So where we are now in 2017 under this Trump regime, no black person supposed to surprise. I think we're supposed to glad to reach a stage, you know, because it means the empire on the way down. But they don't look at <laughs> the majority of people don't see. Yeah. The impression of the empire on the way down. Okay, okay. They think that the American government is now going to be able to successfully prosecute an aggressive war yeah. against anybody who them claim to be the enemy. So no, not Korea no. Has become one of the new enemies. Yes. Right? In fact, <laughs> North Korea is the right enemy. Now. Yes. They even claim so it's because of North Korea why the world is being threatened. Mm -hmm. You ever hear anything like that? Yes. And the man them have a nuclear club, you know, where it's pure white man dominated, you know. Mm -hmm. And because of them racist nature, no other race must even have access to these nuclear weapons. The Israelis have it, you know, right beside Iran, you know. But Iran mustn't have it. Right. Yeah? And all the way in Southeast Asia. That time, if you look at Israel, Compared to the landmass that is Iran. That is Iran. What is the basis under which them have the authority and the right? The other thing is the the, 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 the number of people in Israel yeah. is hardly comparable to the amount of people. Israel is a manufactured state by the Europeans. Definitely. Steal people land and put some other people on it. Mm -hmm. Iraq and those places have been here for thousands of years with them history long, long before white man come out of the cave. <laughs> you know? Israel have a historical yeah. position in Palestine, but not no land. Yeah, they love the land, you know? No. So what we're seeing and what people must realize now is that it's the white man them constructing and reconstructing the world to suit them. This nuclear club that the man them said them have and telling North Korea that them can't join it. Is it remember now, you know, the man them drop an atomic bomb on the Japanese already, you know? Mm-hmm. Them drop chemical weapons from the Ethiopians, you know. Right? Yeah. So, this thing about Syria, for example, and this use of chemical weapons, and creating this big thing about... Black people feed chemical weapons a long time. At least they have to take away themselves because of all the Mussolini coming in with them poison gas and them things there. And the world don't respond to black people when they're dead. No, not when we cry. No, because we say our cry don't have no sound. Mm -mm. You know, our, our ancestors, our gods can't hear them. Our gods can't hear our cry, you know, guess what? I'm? We're not connecting to our gods anymore. Our cry going to a Jehovah's sound. When the time comes, you see, when our cry becomes the strength of our God, yeah. and then in turn the strength of our God becomes infused in us, it is at that time that the question of our survival will be answered. You see, our survival now is based on our ability to be as cooperative, mm -hmm. as calm, calm as meek. rational as possible. Mm -hmm. But a time has to come, you know, when you answer the aggression with aggression. Yes, sir. Fire with fire. Exactly, because... That's okay. where we are now. Right now, right now. Either we find a solution to the problem in our strength, because, you see, the business of our weak black people is not in our interest. Not at all, not at all. If we do not become strong, we will once again be victimized by the Europeans. Many of the nations of the world who were victimized by them know this and understand this. But I don't see it happening, you know, because I do not believe America, as strong as they are, are able to field an army on every battlefront that they will need. That is a key to, 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 to the collapse, you know. 
when your country begins to extend itself into our areas trying to fight war, you know. Oh, but that's where they are. That's now, where they you know. are now. They have a whole heap of so troops. So the things are in place, you know, for the collapse of the American Empire, you know. Just that people hanging on to it, things that America is we. And we, we can't afford to jump to this to we. It's not a we thing, it's them. <laughs> <laughs> it's them falling. Yes. And we must let go, make them fall or help them to go down. So in other words, no. What to me Trump represented is like Nero. Nero fiddle while Rome burn, burning, you know. Trump yeah. will play golf while America go down, you know. Mm-hmm. A golf in my play, you know. Because the, the, the whole truth, you know, is the concept of America going down is anathema. The man who think it yeah. is thinking falsehood for in truth yeah. and in fact in the white world, in fact the whole world, mm-hmm. America going down is not an option. It's not a possibility. Okay, yes. It, yes. it, it is like... Um, but historical evolution shows that all empires rise and fall. But not the American not all, empire. All, all them separate uh, from the world. Yeah, because, <laughs> because their <laughs> position is... Uh, when Mr. Trump yeah. dropped the mother of all bomb, yeah. what is the message that he's sending to the world? Say, look, it's a military complex. we run America now. Not the legislative, not the judicial. But the military complex, what Trump is in is stripping away the legi- America. So America's supposed to have these three arms of, po- of government, you know. Yes. What Trump is doing is making them know, say, look, is it the White House and the Pentagon and Hollywood? Or we are around the place now. <laughs> and Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, but Hollywood have <laughs> you know. Yes. Hollywood is a key institution to maintain an American white supremacy. Yes. What we watch on television and what program us is Hollywood that make it. So that's how they maintain them cultural identity and promote things that work against black people. So if we look at what's happening in America, is Hollywood Trump come from, you know? Television world, you know, brother. Yes. We're going to lose track of that, you know? Just like how Bush to come up, what name? Reagan. Reagan. Yeah. We must re- remember the role of Hollywood in everything America do. And them agent for them cultural propaganda. It is at that point, you know, where the Africans have lost out. We have to have our own movies now. Yeah, we need propaganda. Our, yes, I am. Yes. And we're told that propaganda is not a good word. We didn't want to use the word. But Gavin said, we have to have our own propaganda yes. machinery. And don't afraid of the word. You see? So, where, to me, America is now with Trump. is wonderful. And he must have continued to do him doing every day. Get up something different. Make him just keep on doing it. Yeah, man. So tomorrow morning we get up, we him tweet this, and make him just behave because the empire is crumbling, and the empire must crumble. And he's the right man. Him is the man. Yeah. It's historical, you know. We can't prevent it. Yeah. And and the thing is, what is it that could they? What is it that they can present to us in terms of <clears throat> heightening our fear? What can Trump do to us now? Because mm. we've been through the hell already. You yeah, know? yeah. And it's not as if it's going to stop. Sure. If it weren't Trump, yeah. what, what Trump do is hasten. Yes, man. As you say, yeah, man. the demise. It must happen. And I and I not trying to catch up America. Mm-mm. I'm to, who trying to catch it up must stop catch it up. I'm going to start thinking about black people and thinking about Africa. And think about our economic system, how we can generate our own money and use the opportunity to reconstruct ourselves that when this thing crash, we have something that we can stand on. And, and we can make a claim yes. to the ruins that them leave behind. And I tell you, enough ruins. Right now, the globe is disassembling itself. Frexit and Brexit. California wants to step away. Texas wants to step away. This is part of the global decline of North America. And them environment in wars in places that them don't have enough troops. And now, with the rising of the clan in America now, this is part of the, this, the, the implosion in America itself now, with white men taking to the streets, putting out the clan's behavior up front. Black people are going to have to respond in a very direct way. And empires have to co- implode, as well as explode on the outside. Yeah, because you see, it is that implosion that is going to create the vacancy 
for the others on the outside True. to come in. To come in. It's just when, natural. As soon as them start to fight them. Yeah, man, it's just natural. Yes. And you lose grip of other far-reaching areas and other empires like the China man and other empires are growing. Yeah, so and I and I have no concern about America falling. No, I I I, I cannot see it happening. Just a lot of us here you know have relatives and people there and we are try hope for the best for them. Because they're living there. But okay, in when Greece was falling, you know, the people in the world was coming to an end to, you know. <laughs> it's not the world. When Rome was falling, it's just, it's just, just an empire. empire. <laughs> just an empire. empire. The sound of an empire dying. <laughs> Mr. Marvel says, with yeah. the, you know, so gone over time. Yeah, man. Mark on in. Enough thanks. Give thanks. Yes, I. Rastafari University of Higher Life Learning. Cassidy, heal up. Sponsors, Bobrook Hilltop, Metamorphosis. We're here again next Monday. Peace and prosperity to all the listeners. Rastafari. It's the voice that sets me free. Guide I. Whispering inside of me. Guide I. I feel peace and harmony. It is in silence that we will always, always hear it. Sit quiet and meditate, let the good vibes infiltrate. Even when it's dark, don't you ever have no fear. Yet. Port Antonio, this is Styles FM 96.1 on your FM dial.